Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being with us here at the Oil and Gas Conference. Our next presenting company is Advantage Oil and Gas. Uh, Advantage Oil and Gas is a growth-oriented company focused entirely on developing uh, its significant position in the Montany Natural Gas and Liquid Resource Play in Canada. And with us today is Andy Ma, Chief Executive Officer uh, at Advantage. Andy has over 35 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. Andy, welcome today uh, to the Oil and Gas Conference. We look forward to your presentation uh, and thank you. I'll give you the floor. All right, well, thank you very much and uh, appreciate Intercom for the opportunity to present and also uh, all of you that have uh, dialed in or listening in today. Um, I think it's a great venue to be able to reach a lot of people and to you know, have a conversation virtually, but it still is very effective that we've been uh, finding out over time here. So to kick off our uh, presentation today, uh, we're gonna talk about Advantage and you're gonna learn a little bit more about it, but on page two, let's get uh, started here. Uh, as you know, Can Advantage is a Western Canadian company uh, solely focused on the Montney development and uh, large resource play, as many of you are aware. Uh, Advantage itself is a, we call it a mid cap size company in Canada or a mid, mid size producer some around 45,000 BUE a day. We're about 90% gas weighted today. And uh, we've made, you know, continuing uh, success and uh, achievement and progress towards increasing our liquids contents, which we'll talk about as uh, you'll see some of the uh, uh, slides and information coming up. 2020, we're planning to spend about 135 to 145 million dollars, as you see there on the uh, caption. Uh, the bulk of that was during the first quarter of this year. The second half, uh, we retooled the capital spending a bit here, uh, focused mostly on uh, bringing on some production from our oily areas, but also uh, drilling a few additional gas wells. But we've reduced some of the infrastructure spend in the second half, which we'll talk about. Um, as um, if we move to the next slide, on slide three, You'll get an idea how we uh, think through some of our uh, foundation and our uh, cost structure views. One of the things that we believe in is, you know, certainly high quality oil and natural gas. Um, we have a very low cost structure. In fact, when you look at some of the uh, Montney peers, we are the lowest cost in uh, Canada. And uh, that establishment allows us to continue with having the gas, which we started developing in 2008, as our low decline, very low cost structure, that forms a very solid cash flow base, which is even generating most of our cash flow today, allows us to move into the liquids arena. And uh, we've done that in the last three years. And at this point here, commercialized our uh, new light oil acid areas. And still though, we have, very, we have drilled very little of our land base overall. So I think we're in great shape looking ahead, strong balance sheet, uh, we continue to remain around two times or less. We may go up a little bit depending on the quarters above that, but for short periods. And we continue to make sure we have strong financial flexibility with our operational platform. If we move to slide four, you can see that uh, recently we, uh, and you may have saw that in some of the press releases or information flow, uh, we sold 12 and percent of our uh, large gas plant, our 400 million a day glacier gas plant for $100 million, well, 12 and a small interest. And uh, we'd elected to do that after some time here. We've had uh, a lot of inbounds on our major gas plant uh, ever since we started, in fact, probably five years ago when we started pushing that plant above uh, 300 million a day of capacity. Uh, we've had inbounds from many midstreams and players here who wanted a piece of it. We've always said, no, we're content with ensuring that we maintain that strategically and on a cost basis. And as we continue to develop our liquids, we felt there was going to be some point where we may uh, monetize a small piece of it, depending on the structure, depending on who the partner was, uh, depending on where we were headed in our strategies. And with the fact that we completed our first round of infrastructure for our light oil assets uh, in the first part of this year, uh, we felt this was the time to make sure that our financial flexibility was just as strong. And with that, we've uh, 
you know, have a, a one of the strongest balance sheets up here when the small mid cap space as well. So that is uh, one of the reasons why we continue to progress here. We still own the bulk of our infrastructure, control it. We have access to all the capacity at that plant. Uh, on page five, we'll just uh, flip that over here. So with that, people have asked us, you know, if you did that sale, are you, you know, have you put yourself into a higher cost uh, situation? Our answer is no, and it will be no as we continue with our development, even the foreseeable future. As you can see here with a list of uh, peer companies across the Canadian basin here, um, you can see where advantage is, and uh, we, we show the advantage pro forma too. So even with the uh, sale of 12.5%, we've had a very slight increase, if any, in our costs overall. Uh, we're still uh, right up there. The, the first party that you see there is not a Monty player. So that is a, you know, larger Canadian companies, not a Monty player. The rest, uh, the bulk of them uh, in this slide are, and there's also other players, but you can see where we position. And even as we develop here over the next, uh, like I said, foreseeable future, we, we will stay in that top, uh, let's say the top three, top four low cost producers in this basin. Next slide. And you know, well, this just reinforces some of our uh, base, under, uh, base views on how we see generating value in this new energy market. You know, in the center there, we talk about delivering sustainable adjusted funds flow growth. In other words, cash flow growth, cash flow per share growth is what we believe uh, drives eventually here uh, value in our firm and value in our share returns. So with that, we take a measured approach, you know, it's, it's doing it sustainably. We don't say it's, uh, we don't, you know, go hundred miles an hour. We don't, we've never done that. We do it at a measured pace where we can make sure we have a balance of all the other factors. You know, again, growing too fast, you could impact your cost structure, growing too fast, could impact your, uh, your debt levels and also your declines. So all that is a factor of how we see uh, running a company and, and continue to have it generate long-term value. Uh, next slide. So this uh, shows, and we wanted to add a couple of slides here and talking about uh, related to the ESG matters. Uh, one is, you know, just a little bit of a banner for Canada. You can see where Canada sits in terms of overall uh, ESG scores relative to other jurisdictions. And I think this slide says it in itself that you know, Canada is a heck of a great place to invest. If, if you're thinking about ESG, we, we rank very high on all aspects. Um, and I think we will continue to uh, do that and even better as we look ahead here. On the next slide, on slide eight, uh, we zoom in a little bit on advantage. We talk about our leadership and sustainability, not just driven from what we believe is management, but also as many of you understand, Canada has one of the strictest regulatory uh, uh, regulations up here on all aspects. So, you know, everything is regulated hard, uh, on all aspects. Uh, we've been a leader in that. You can see that, um, you know, with the way we've set up our operations, uh, we in effect have a CO2 sequestration project already moving. And that's just part and parcel of our gas plant where we have what we call it an acid gas disposal part of our plant, which takes CO2 and some of the um, hydrogen sulfide that's in our Montney gas, small levels. We uh, remove that out of the gas stream and re-inject it. And with the amount of CO2 that we're uh, disposing, we've received uh, you know, credits, carbon credits for that, which we've been able to sell. And we've been uh, very successful at that. So you can see that you know, on a net carbon intensity basis, we're very, very low relative to um, you know, the sector as well as even to other sectors. So we have a line of sight, we believe uh, very uh, soon here to be able to move towards almost a net zero or even better, depending on how we uh, work with the infrastructure we have. So we've got, you know, this large gas plant that has a disposal uh, process already set up to, to take care of our uh, production. And it uh, adds an extra element of being able to do a lot on the environmental side. So we'll move to the next slide. So get, getting into the land base and the assets that we own, Glacier is our, uh, as you can see on the map here, Glacier is right against the Alberta BC border. And uh, 
where we're at is in the center part of the uh, Montney fairway. So you can see that little inset, we're kind of right in about that center point in the, uh, in the pink uh, Montney fairway here. So what we're talking about here is that glacier, we started that in 2008 with our drilling, mostly based uh, and focused on our uh, lean gas, which is highly prolific. And when the play first started in 2006 to 2008, uh, a lot of the views of the Monty were that it was a dry gas play. And most of that was because two things. One, we targeted the zones that had the most porosity. And next, we targeted the, uh, the layers that we felt were best to uh, respond to hydraulic uh, fracturing on a horizontal uh, well basis. That, <clears throat> that gave the view that, uh, yeah, the Monty overall was going to be drier than some of the U.S. plays. But as we worked the different layers in the mine, we found that there was more liquids. And as you can see here, uh, the areas like Valhalla Progress and Pipestone are in the in our area. There are more liquids, uh, uh, rich gas here. And uh, Valhalla is more of a condensate. Even East Glacier is condensate gas moving into the light oils in Progress, east part of Valhalla and Pipestone Wembley. Those areas are the areas that we've been recently working on and putting capital in. And uh, we've, like I said, have enough wells there now to commercialize that, have a very good view of where it can go. And we're really comfortable now with being able to allocate, allocate capital quickly to any of these areas and generate strong uh, payout and returns here, quick payouts and returns. And uh, the three areas that are connected, uh, interconnected to our glacier gas plant is Glacier Valhalla and Progress. So those three areas, we have pipes that interconnect and we can, uh, you know, the benefits of uh, developing those at a very low economic threshold are there because of that uh, ownership and low costs uh, driven by the, uh, our gas plant uh, processing. Next slide, please. So this is just a slide and I'm sure you might've uh, saw this uh, a lot uh, from other Montney players that presented this week. You know, there's multiple layers in the Montney. It's uh, 250 to 300 meters thick. Uh, so it rivals anything uh, globally in terms of resource. And it also has varying degrees of, as I said, natural gas to liquids to oil. And uh, not all the layers have been exploited or drilled yet. And even in our land blocks, we're starting to uh, uh, drill some different layers, but some of the competitors beside us have been doing that for a few more years. So we've got some good insight and we're very, uh, uh, very pleased with the outcomes and also very, uh, very um, optimistic about what this play could, could do in the long term here uh, as a global player. Next slide. So just getting into a little bit when we talked about those assets. If we move up into the progress, which is northeast of our glacier asset, uh, progress is a, uh, a land block we put together uh, starting in about 2016. Uh, we started adding more lands. And then over time, we've assembled here a uh, very sizable uh, play with, with both gas and light oil opportunities here. We uh, drilled, we initially started drilling with, you know, a little bit older completion technology. And today, uh, in the last 18 months, we've uh, had a couple of wells that we've completed with more up-to-date fracks. You can see the results, one of them, 16 to 36, you know, over 1,100 uh, barrels a, a day of liquids, 6 million a day gas, flowing at very high pressure still. It's been on for quite some time now and, and uh, producing very well. We've got other well, uh, wells in here that were drilled older sequences of time, but they all were very, very interesting in terms of uh, showing us the potential. It was a matter of just getting the fracks here tuned a bit. And uh, this property here is, you know, got a lot of uh, future to it. We decided to connect this to Glacier via pipelines for now. So we're actually bringing uh, the wells through a pipeline that the gas goes to Glacier to process, and we actually are uh, moving the liquids to a third party producer uh, on a short term basis to handle the liquid separation. And that arrangement was set up so that, you know, we could do this on a temporary basis. And in addition, it fit well because, uh, you know, as cash flows were all 
uh, hit hard here in the first half of this year. We, like I said, we pulled back in our capital spending, decided not to build our 5,000 barrel a day battery, which we've kind of about halfway through that cycle. We have the uh, completion of uh, and construction left to do, but we decided to defer that out of this year. So we can move about 2,000 barrels a day of uh, liquids through the infrastructure, uh, the pipeline infrastructure. And as we see uh, prices in the uh, oil and liquids continue to firm up a bit and we see more sustainable pricing, we'll come back and complete that uh, project. Right now, we would say it's kind of in that end of 21, 22 timeframe that we're thinking, but we'll, again, we'll firm it up as you go. But we're very happy with progress. It has one of the best uh, competitive economics here with very strong netbacks uh, because our gas processing is in effect uh, handled at our own gas plant at Glacier. Next slide. When I talk about Pipestone Wembley, uh, this area here, uh, you might have heard, you know, a lot of talk about it two years ago, uh, the Pipestone field, which you can see a lot of those green horizontal wells is actually in Canada. And, um, and Canada drilled up, you know, quite a bit of this, made a lot of uh, headlines with it as they were drilling from uh, west to east. And they went from uh, drilling light, uh, leaner gas into the condensates, into the light oils. So where our lands are, we're sitting right at that uh, uh, light oil fairway. And um, we've drilled now, we have seven wells all tied in there. We uh, have some uh, wells that, you know, are producing nicely into a uh, battery that we did finish off here. So a 5,000 barrel day battery, we completed commissioned here in the second quarter. So this property is not connected, interconnected back to our glacier facility or the, uh, or the hubs above it. Um, right now it's standalone. We did set up arrangements with a midstream firm to take some uh, small amount of take or pay volumes for now. We'll continue to uh, develop this again in a measured fashion. And as we do that, you know, down the road, and I keep coming back to some thoughts that, you know, someday we might connect it all back into our own infrastructure network. And as we continue to develop the two blocks there, you can see two blocks, uh, call it a north block, south block, block in this asset. Um, once we develop that north block a bit more, our distance to interconnection is quite a bit uh, less. So we're real happy here. Wells are, you know, following our expectations very nicely. And again, a great property here that uh, will add to the complement of our other assets. Next slide. So Glacier, like we talked about, is the foundational asset. Uh, you know, we drilled uh, more of the upper and lower Montney in here, which are very prolific uh, leaner gas. Uh, the middle Montney, which is that whole middle section, uh, constitutes uh, about two, almost 200 meters here. That is all varying in liquids and mostly condensate from 25 to 80 barrels a million on average uh, through west to east, uh, east being uh, richer. Some huge gas wells here, 17 million. We've, you know, some of these wells could do more if we didn't restrict them in any way. If they, if we allowed them to just flow as much as they can, they would be uh, very, very strong. So here's where we're planning six wells in the second half of uh, this year because of the pricing that we saw here as commodities started to strengthening for gas. And uh, we still have uh, oil at a point where, you know, we're not going to be putting a lot of money into the oil side of it, just enough to continue to bring on those wells and uh, advance that play with drilling to learn, but not drilling to, to grow in a big way at this point. Despite that, our liquids will increase a bit in 21 as we see it, just because we've got some uh, production yet to come on. And uh, this play uh, at Glacier is a cornerstone for the company and it'll continue for years. Payout on some of these wells at the strip here is a year or less. And we need to get into that $45 uh, a barrel oil pricing before we see uh, competitive economics internally. So, but at $45, our oil liquids plays are economic. It's just to compete against, you know, such prolific and low cost gas. Uh, we have to see about $45 oil or better in order to um, start putting money there. But we will uh, balance that out as we go. Next slide. And this just gives an overview of the uh, infrastructure. You can see uh, our land blocks, uh, where we're positioned, you know, we do have the major pipelines running right through the east side of our lands. 
uh, this Trans Canada Pevna pipelines. Uh, if you've heard, uh, one of uh, the big major midstreams here in Canada is uh, planning to push an extra liquids pipe up through this fairway also. And then that uh, the pipe that uh, runs across into BC is an interconnector that TC Energy already has in place. So we're in a great kind of position with our land blocks right here feeding into the major pipes. We've got our own um, network of pipes that interconnects, as I said, as well as our glacier gas plant. And you can see that uh, more activity is starting to occur in the south end where additional gas plants and pipes on Wembley and south are being built. But our glacier plant is the biggest plant uh, in this region, kind of uh, uh, regionally within the glacier, Valhalla and Pipestone area. The other, uh, you can see two additional hubs, liquids handling hubs that we've indicated on this map sheet at Valhalla and Pilgrims as well. But Glacier is the heart of uh, processing in this area. That's why it's strategic um, from where it's positioned in the basin here, but it's also why we had so much uh, interest from other players wanting to come in and seeing that as we proved up this acreage, they're getting more excited about the fact that they want to be here. And that's a good thing for a uh, great position for us to be at advantage here. Next slide. And, you know, just the last few slides here, talk a little bit about natural gas, uh, our positions, because, you know, we always get asked now about diversified markets and where we're putting our uh, product. So this slide here shows you some of our transportation uh, pipe commitments here. We don't, a lot of them are situated such that uh, we have ability to change and uh, add volumes in the future if we need to. We took, we didn't take an overly excessive amount as a small mid cap here. Um, and we think that we're well positioned as we move that gas through. So we do deliver into the uh, Dawn Ontario market, into the Midwest Chicago market, and we also uh, deliver into the local uh, eco market, which uh, is, is Western Canadian pricing there. We don't have access into the Berlin market today, and uh, we felt that this, this will give us a nice complement from where we are of balancing out our portfolio. If you go to the next slide, this shows you kind of where our uh, production uh, will move here as we look at 21 and, and beyond. Uh, so the different physical uh, flows there, ACO Empress, which is really ACO Empress is just the uh, Alberta Saskatchewan border. And that is still priced uh, at ACO, so you can consider into that. We've got Emerson, which is the Great Lakes, and then we've got Dawn, which is Eastern Ontario or Eastern Canada, and then the US Midwest, which is uh, Chicago. So you can see that in uh, 21, we're about, you know, over a third into what we would say still the eco pricing, and then the balance is a mix of, uh, of the other markets here. Hedging, we continue, we've always had a component of hedging that we felt uh, is, is needed at different levels at different times in order to reduce the volatility of our cash flows. And as you can see now, we're well hedged for the balance of this year uh, for 20, and we're starting to put in hedges into 21. I think we're just pushing uh, above 30% hedges now, uh, having some NYMEX exposure, Chicago, and also uh, uh, the Canadian markets that are involved with that. Hedging on the oil, with the amount of oil production and liquids we do, um, we have increased some of our hedging there at some good prices and we'll continue to watch that, although gas still is a uh, predominant uh, driver in our company today. And uh, we'll continue to advance the liquids, as I said, as we move forward. So slide 17, I guess the last one here. And that's just the end of it. But overall, I hope I gave you, or gave you some uh, overview of what Advantage is about. You know, you can see the financial discipline here. We've always managed the balance sheet. Uh, ensure the flexibility we have there. Operationally, very nimble. Uh, we can move quickly and allocate capital to the different products that we have, which are all at this point proven commercial. And uh, we're uh, very returns focused. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that there's uh, returns to our shareholders and uh, we will continue to run a company that uh, is sustainable and has that long-term view. So that's the end of the uh, slides. and. Uh, uh, we'll move on to questions.
Andy, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, very informative. Uh, the first question is, you mentioned your completions have improved in progress. Um, what were the improvements and are they applicable to the glacier and pipestone uh, acreage as well? Right. Yep. Good question. So I can just, uh, I can say that one of the things that we did, uh, and I'll lead it into progress, that glacier, most of that is, uh, like I said, leaner gas, a little less liquids. We were doing, um, and we still are keeping a pretty good separation in our uh, well spacing. So um, at Glacier, we did not push fracks much more than a ton per meter. And uh, more recently, as we worked into the liquids, we noticed and observed from others and also some of the U.S. information that, you know, pushing it a little bit uh, harder on the intensity, moving into one and a half tons, uh, I think the highest we've gotten was just touching two, but we also kept the spacing uh, quite wide. So 400 meters between wells and 50 meters vertically. So that ends up being about four wells per section. And as you, most of you know, uh, I think some of the US and other areas which have been drilled a little more denser are pushing well beyond eight wells, 10 wells per section. And part of that was our views that we were concerned that if you got too much too tight, uh, you would have a lot of parent-child interactions or well interference. And we wanted to slowly step into that and watch it. And um, I, I think to the benefit of just knowledge, you know, some of the work in the Permian and other basins have given us a pretty good insight in how to continue to develop. Um, so those changes that we put into progress, pushing the intensity, the spacing, we didn't change that much, although the spacing in fracks, we tightened up a bit in uh, each well, not between wells but within the well. That made a dramatic difference. That is applicable to Pipestone Wembley. And we also, what we learned there is we could apply some of that, although we don't think we would go to that degree in our liquids layers in Glacier. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, can you summarize uh, the advantage and, and why advantage is unique among small and mid producers uh, in Western Canada? Kind of, kind of highlight the, the, those, uh, un, those unique uh, operating efficiencies. Yeah, so if I draw back on that, I think what's, what's really uh, important to understand is the small mid caps in Canada are today are primarily Canadian owned companies, you know, Canadian teams. In the past years ago, I mean, the Canadian uh, landscape was mostly, you know, there was some junior startups, exploration type companies that would feed into the large majors, which were some, you know, some of the uh, multinationals were here and still some are here, but we had a, you know, the, the basin was basically mostly multinationals. Being the Canadian uh, producers owning most of the Montney and the resource place here, I think a lot of the Canadian companies over time, what, what occurred was that, you know, the need for capital was there. Capital markets, as you, as we all understand, the last three, four years have been, uh, uh, you know, have been reducing in terms of the availability of capital. So a lot of Canadian firms elected to go on the midstream route. They, they you know, made uh, contractual arrangements, long-term taker pays, decided to put their focus on the drill bed as opposed to the, to the midstream. We kind of took a different approach. We said, well, just a minute. Long-term, we believe that if this, if, these, if this play is as large and as big as it is, it has a long, long a horizon. So let's maintain uh, our ownership and control these facilities. There may be a day where, yeah, down the road, it's it, depending on the maturation curve you're at, that you know, you're better off to monetize them and utilize those dollars for something else, um, but not yet, right? So you saw us do a small piece. And I think that sets us apart because it, it provides a very low cost uh, situation for us. It also doesn't uh, you know, it doesn't tie us down into any preconceived or pre-committed uh, volume levels that we have to get to. So we can do it at the pace we want. We can move dollars between liquids and gas. And I think that that low cost component and the environmental uh, benefits that we have by owning, a, you know, such a, a significant facility and pipes uh, are likely going to attract others over time into wanting to be part of this that we have, right? So I think those things are all parts and parcel of being, I think, a bit unique for our size of company. Yeah, that's a, a good uh, good position to be in, certainly. 
can you grow production and generate free cash flow at the current strip uh, pricing? Yeah, to answer that, uh, yes. We, uh, I kind of alluded a bit to that, that as you look forward, you know, through the balance of 20, and as we've done some internal numbers in 21 and beyond, you know, growing at kind of a, a measured pace, let's say uh, single digit growth, at the strip, we intend to generate and continue to pay down debt. So, um, you know, today we're just over two times debt to cash flow. And we would expect by sometime in 21 that we should be pushing towards one and a half times debt to cash flow. And that would just be free cash generated. We're still going to be uh, moving growth, especially the liquids, uh, single digit. And that's just bringing on more of the uh, wells and uh, allowing them to flow uh, unrestricted as we move forward here. We're doing some gas drilling, but we're not going crazy yet, but we're prepared. Um, if we see a sustained gassing price around, you know, call it Canadian $2 or two and a quarter and better, that's great returns for us. Uh, good payouts also for some of our glacier wells. And we can look to uh, do something with the gas side of the equation. So I think that allows us to uh, be able to do the full cycle, uh, even at the strip prices. And, you know, quarter by quarter, there may be quarters where we're a little, you know, spend a little bit more, but we don't, you know, wouldn't be much. And some quarters certainly are going to be much uh, stronger in free cash. Yeah, I have time for a couple more questions. I want to get your take on uh, where you think uh, M&A activity is going um, and uh, what, what, what type of player will you be uh, if, if that activity picks up? Well, first and foremost, I mean, our organic development is, is certainly what we have in the forefront of our views. We can do that. We can control it. We understand it uh, very well. Uh, looking at the M&A side of it, what we're focused on there is uh, call it near in opportunities, uh, whether it's assets, lands, and so on, uh, near operations. And one of the things that we think could definitely benefit ourselves is if you know, we were able to work uh, to build, bring those lands in to our gas plant to fill it up, right? That would, uh, that would certainly be a huge benefit for us. So we are looking at that. Some of the uh, lands there, I mean, they vary depending, you know, it's the old bid ask <laughs> where people or heads are at. Uh, but you know, there's also opportunities potentially uh, to partner with some of the players that may not be, you know, in such uh, strength uh, financially. Um, even though they have the opportunity, maybe there's a way of partnering that we could uh, utilize our facilities to benefit and bring others through and have them also realize some benefits as we uh, jointly develop some areas. So those are things that we focus on. Uh, we do keep an eye on the fairway as well as other parts of the Canadian Basin. And, uh, you know, doing something more moving out of our geographical area is not, it's not impossible to, for us to consider, but we'd have to make sure that the business, uh, you know, would be as good as Advantage or we could move it into something like Advantage today and then keep building that business. Yeah, so I think M&A, that's how we see it. Um, you know, there's, there's some consolidation that I think has started as you guys have seen some of the deals, Pain and Pony and so on recently. I think there will be some of that happening, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a rash of it in the next six months yet. I think there will be some uh, as it continues to occur through the next couple of years. Okay. Andy, uh, we, we certainly appreciate your time. I want to encourage people uh, to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with Andy. If you have further questions, uh, I would also encourage people to kind of take a look at uh, uh, your CO2 sequestration uh, efforts on your sustainability report. Then go to your website. Uh, and, and look at that in more detail. Uh, that's an encouraging story, not only for you guys, but also for the industry. Uh, certainly something that maybe uh, some other folks are looking at. Uh, love your story about uh, on transport and takeaway and being able to control that. Uh, anyway, thank you for your time, Andy. We do appreciate your support uh, with the oil and gas conference. And, and, and thank you for uh, uh, giving us such a great presentation. All right, thank you and appreciate it.